Yo guys, welcome back to the channel. Really excited to get out and run my hauler again. And as you can see here, I'm loading up my Red Cat uh, Ascent Fusion. And gonna go out and do some uh, kind of comp style crawling. And that was the main purpose for getting this hauler and doing this kind of off-road build on the hauler was to be able to throw a truck on the back that I would normally carry up to a really good crawling spot. And this way I could actually have some fun on the trail on the way to the crawling spot and I don't have to carry the truck. Uh, kind of a dual purpose uh, setup here. And I'm really happy with the way this thing has turned out so far. You can see there that I have my uh, loading ramps. Um, I'll have more details on the build coming up soon. I just wanted to get out and do a nice run. I do have a um, kind of a build series going on with this. Check out my playlist for the TRX-6 hauler and you'll see everything that I have done to this so far. I don't think I covered any of the accessories that you see here yet, like the grill, the hood vents, the mirrors, the door handles, the uh, exhaust stacks, things like that. But those are all cc hand parts which are available through uh, rc four-wheel drive you'll see i have the headache rack on the back and the roof rack with the lights those i have some uh, videos on already i have a uh, wood um, deck on my bed and that's mainly because i widened the bed just to accommodate uh, the wider um, offset on the wheels on on uh, like a 10 scale uh, crawler on the stock bed the wheels just stick out too far i think the stock bed maybe you could fit like I think it's like nine and three quarter inch width uh, from, from wheel to wheel. And a lot of my crawlers are wider than that. So did a little bed extension. I have a video on that. Uh, other than that, I'm running the stock motor, stock ESC. I did just upgrade the servo to a 60 kg direct power flash hobby. Pretty happy with that. But this truck is so big and so long and so heavy, I don't think you can really have too powerful of a servo. But for now, this one is, is doing the job. Uh, like I said, stock motor, stock ESC so far. That'll get changed at some point. Um, I do have silicone tire inserts in the front wheels and the rearmost wheels, uh, along with some little helper springs I mounted on the shocks. You can check out my video on that too. Um, just on the, the, the outer, the, the four outer shocks, um, front and rear. I'm also running a sway bar I installed on the rear, custom sway bar, so check that out. That was like a $10 sway bar. It works awesome on this truck. All of that stuff was done just to make this more stable, uh, and I think it really worked out pretty well. You will see at one point in this video, I roll this thing over. I was pushing it a little too too far past uh, what I should be, even here. like. Look, this was not my original intention. Yes, I am going to push this truck hard. It is an off-road build. I'm not going to worry too much about getting scraped up and beat up. That's kind of its purpose. Um, but, you know, some of the parts are a little fragile, like the exhaust stacks I was a little worried about. You know, you take a rollover on those. They are plastic. I don't know. I mean, so far they did survive one roll, so that's a, that's a good sign. But I don't know, you know, long term. I'm going to try not to flip this truck over. But uh, I ended up pushing it a little past what I wanted to. This particular trail, it's kind of a little too tight and um, steep in spots for what my original intention was for this. I have a specific trail in mind that I do a lot of like comp style crawling up at the top of this mountain. And I really had that trail in mind for this truck. And it's, it's a mountain bike trail, so it's a little bit improved. Um, a lot of the rock kind of features are built up a little bit so it, it would be perfect for this truck that's the next time i take it out i'm going to take it there for sure but this was a cool spot i just came here because of its convenience it's a really short walk from the parking area and it's really close to my uh my house so uh i just had a lot of fun and it's an awesome awesome crawling spot may not be the best spot for the hauler but for the red cat you're about to see i'm gonna have a little running video of that too <laughs> You'll see there that I also um, added, I had a sound module. It's a cheapy sound module. I'll link it up. It originally sounded kind of crappy. It doesn't really change RPM as much as I like it to, but the idling sound I think is cool and it's not super annoying. I ended up putting it in a plastic case that a servo came in just because originally it was just an annoyingly loud. It has no volume control. I had to add an on off switch to it. Uh, so it's, it was like a $17 sound module, but for what it is, I'm, I'm kind of happy with it now that I've kind of fine-tuned it. I think it just adds like a cool effect. Somewhere down the road, I probably will do the ESS, like dual sound in this truck, just so I could have more control over it and maybe do like an air brake sound, I think would be really cool. 
but uh, I'm happy with it so far. You could see here the Red Cat Fusion uh, Ascent. This, this truck continues to impress me. I don't have much done to this thing. I did a little bit of uh, shock tuning. I have some stretchy hair ties on the front shocks. I took out all the internal springs. These are copies of um, J Concept tusks that were I got off Amazon, like cheap, like 19 bucks. These are Tim Tin dual stage foam inserts that were like $12 off Amazon. And they're, they're incredibly grippy. They're as good as any other tire I think I've used. I mean, you see that line right there. That was a really steep, uh, steep rock. And these things grip like crazy. This truck did extremely well. Stock servo, stock motor, stock everything. Stock controller, didn't change any of that stuff. It was really just like the, uh, the wheels, tires, inserts, and some tuning, suspension tuning. And that's about it. I do, you see I have the added little 3D printed bed on the back and I have some different sliders just because it has a, a receiver mount built in and they're a little bit shorter so they don't stick out past the body. You can check out my, um, I have a playlist on the Ascent Fusion as well. So any of the mods and, and previous testing I've done with this, you can check that out. But super cool truck, especially for the money. I don't think there's a better value in terms of performance uh, out there right now. You know, for 400 bucks, you can, even the stock tires are really good. You can throw in like some different inserts in, in the stock tires and this thing just does incredibly well. So I had a lot of fun with it. And that was kind of the point of this whole build was, uh, like I mentioned earlier, just to be able to, like this kind of truck, it's not a great trail truck. You know, any, any to me, anything that has a really forward weight bias and has uh, a lot of overdrive is just like a terrible all around trail truck. But you get into really difficult obstacles like this and it's awesome, but I wouldn't want to drive this truck very far on just a regular, somewhat boring, easy trail. I just feel like it's wearing everything out. It's putting a lot of heat into the motor. It's where, you know, it, it, it puts a lot of strain on the electronics and the whole drivetrain and stuff and you're just wearing out. So typically I would just grab this truck and carry it. I would hike up into the woods or hike over to this spot, walk 10 minutes, throw a battery in, and that's fine. Don't get me wrong. That's, that's cool, you know, but that to me is like, if I only have an hour, hour and a half to get out, that's 10 minutes of wasted time that I could be enjoying with a trail truck if I were driving from where I parked up into the trail. So that's the idea behind the hauler is I can throw the, throw a truck on top of the hauler and have 10 minutes of fun going up to wherever I'm going and then 10 minutes of fun coming back down. And it ends up being like the hauler is so much fun to drive with a truck on the back. It makes it so challenging and it looks so cool with the wheels articulating and stuff. It almost ends up being just as much fun as this. And and sometimes I end up, like when I first drove it, I didn't even take the truck off the back of the hauler. I just drove the hauler the entire drive and just had a blast with it. So it's super fun, man. I just, I just think it's a really cool build. It's a little bit pricey overall. You know, I will say that, you know, to the buy-in for the hauler is up there, even used. I think I got mine for like 500 bucks. I think the guy drove it like once in his living room. So it was not really even used, but... You know, all the little details and additions that but you don't have to do too much to it check out my build series and you'll see the helper springs are couldn't be any cheaper the sway bar couldn't be any cheaper stock motor stock ESC, even the stock servo if you're not pushing this thing really to its limit if you're just going to be driving on trails and stuff yeah you could run it with the stock servo until it craps out you know if and when and you don't really have to go crazy with all the scale accessories and stuff the bed widening kit couldn't also cheap as can be you know you, you buy the uh, either balsa or bass basswood for the uh the deck and then i use little 25 mil abs spacers so you could probably if you can get like a single piece of wood or two pieces of wood i the, the stuff i wanted came in like a 15 pack so i paid a little more for it but um ultimately that is a really cheap thing to build too even the ramps that you saw at some point i'll show how i made those i made those out of um, a combination of kydex plastic basswood which is similar to like a balsa wood sheet and then i found some rc4 wheel drive like faux diamond plate that i put over the top and then i found like some little like 90 degree aluminum edging that you'll see run that runs down the edge just as like to finish it off and i think they came out awesome and they're really inexpensive and then i just bought some cheapy little um you know tie down chains and yeah it's it's not it's not a huge uh, cost to, to set this thing up like this. And look, I mean, it's just, it's awesome. All right, right about here is, is um, coming up is where I, I, I kind of roll this thing.
I think it's right over here somewhere. Just kind of uh, underestimated the, the side hill angle. And, you know, sometimes you're paying a little too much attention to um, the camera or filming. Yeah, like right here. And just wasn't really, yeah, wasn't prepared to grab it. I thought for sure stuff was broken. Right. A too um, but no, luckily, so the headache rack on yeah, the back I, there, you'll see I that thing is steel. Stacks, but uh, I think this headache rack, being that it's steel, protects them a little bit. I definitely shaved off some of the uh, plastic here, but it stayed on. That was a close one. I didn't want to uh, interrupt no myself there, but yeah, so that, that headache rack is all steel. It mounts directly to the chassis. That thing really adds a lot of uh, rigidity to the whole structure, and I think overall that's probably what saved it. What I realized, too, is I mistakenly, I must have clicked my controller into high gear when I was doing that, and that's probably a huge part of the reason because I didn't, the drag brake doesn't really work well in high gear. That's probably a huge part of the reason why I had that uh, kind of uh, happen there. But this section here... you. I'll admit, I added that rock that my rear tires are on right there was not there to begin with, but there was no way I could get up through here. Um, which leads me to another point. This rig, as it says, I didn't weigh it yet, but this thing has to be all of 20 pounds or more. It might even be more. It might be closer to 22 pounds as you see it. Um, if you have to carry this thing, it's real. It's like you have to grab it from the front and the back, like you're carrying a tray of hamburgers at the family picnic. You know, you have to grab that thing and just kind of balance it. And it's it's really not a fun truck to have to pick up on the trail, especially because then what do you do with your controller? I had two controllers with me. That's the other thing. There's a lot going on, and that's what I realized. I have to be better prepared. I have to bring a backpack so I can throw the controller in there. Um, it gets really involved really quick because they said you have two trucks two controllers you're messing around i didn't want to leave one truck on while i was using the other truck so it, there's a lot of back and forth you kind of really have to be prepared to go out and, and run something like this uh it's it's becomes somewhat complicated and then you know you don't want to leave your one truck sitting somewhere and walk too far away from it you never know who's gonna show up and uh walk away with your truck so it's a little tricky to figure out, but ultimately it worked out and uh, I had a great time. Everything worked great. I did have an issue, the ramps I had strapped up under the bed and I didn't realize the tire had pushed one forward and it got jammed up in there and I almost smoked my ESC and or motor, but luckily it went into like a uh, overload protection and uh, saved it. So uh, that's it guys, stay tuned, uh, subscribe if you want to see more, hit me up in the comments if you have any questions, check out my playlist on this if you want to see any, anything else in detail and I'm going to have a lot more in the future on this. Uh, thanks for watching, later.